graffiti in the modern world. Some see it as vandalism. For others, it's a sort of pop culture on the boundaries of modern art, never mind that it defaces someone else's property. But it's not new. Graffiti has been around since ancient times, ever since people could write, really. It's a generally overlooked nuisance for archaeologists, but for some, it's another glimpse into the past. So uh, we are at uh, Tel Avnin in the Judean Shvela, and uh, we are looking for an ancient uh, quarry that was used by Byzantine hermits. Boaz Zisu is an Israeli archaeologist from Bar Ilan University. He's taking us to a site he discovered in the 1990s when trying to catch grave robbers as the then commander of the Antiquities Authority's unit for protecting tombs. I simply hope to find uh, more uh, inscriptions that I overlooked then. Ah, yeah. uh -huh. look, 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 look. It's Christe. It's the name of Jesus, but invocative. It's like, oh, Jesus. Mm. It's hard to believe that it survived in such a shape for 1,500 years because nobody comes here. Kind of have a cross here, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I found another one. one. Great, are you? <laughs> We Maybe, have I'm another one. One. Maybe I'm the first person to see <laughs> this in 1,500 years. Ancient graffiti carved into the walls of burial caves, tombs, and quarries have sent us a postcard from the past and have given us a look into the minds of our ascendants. In a way, graffiti is like the Facebook of earlier eras. Ancient graffiti is pretty much what modern graffiti is, although it was written in antiquity in the ancient languages. That is to say, uh, it is um, anything written uh, on a wall, column, um, object, uh, floor, uh, by somebody from antiquity, either who lived there or was passing through, who wanted to leave a message either to someone specific uh, or a, a specific group of people or to future generations. We have a cross. Yeah. We have in Greek, Delta, Alpha, Nu, Iota, Eta. Lambda. Daniel, yeah, it's clear. And then we have underneath Johannes, yeah, in the sigma, Johannes, yeah, like John. This graffiti has the name Daniel John with two lions around it. Maybe it was a depiction of the biblical story of Daniel in the lion's den. In modern days, spray paint and marker pens are the most common instruments of the graffiti artist. But in ancient times, a nail or a stick often did the job. This cave is made out of soft limestone, and about 1,500 years ago, Byzantine hermits lived here, and they carved in the walls. And you know what? Today, it's still going on. Visitors who come to this cave have left their mark here. This is modern graffiti. Somebody wrote Badu, and they wrote the word sex out, and other words here. So graffiti is something that happened in the past, and it's continuing to happen to this day. Our quest for more ancient graffiti takes us to Hirbit Burjim, an ancient settlement that sits atop a network of underground tunnels that the Jews used to hide from the Roman soldiers during the Second Revolt in 135 CE. Unfortunately, in this cave, the looters came before the archaeologists. So uh, we missed a lot of data, a lot of material. But still, in some uh, concealed spaces, we uncovered remains from the time of the Bar Kokhva revolt, the great Jewish mm -hmm. revolt against the Romans. Mm -hmm. Oil lamps, coins, storage jars. While grave robbers were able to take away the findings over the years, it's the graffiti that has survived since it was etched into the walls. At this burial chamber, something unusual turned up. This is the script, what is called the Paleo-Hebrew script. It's the script used by Jews in the first temple period, but in the second temple period, Jews returned to this script for special reasons. It's sacred and also it reminds them of the um, good old days of the first temple period. So here, somebody writes these names, this name is Jonathan. When we talk about the basic level of literacy, graffiti also show us, just from their sheer volume and also the range of society they represent, that this part of the world in particular was highly literate. That is, basic literary skills uh, were shared by a very uh, high proportion of the population. 2,000 years ago, these hills were the metropolitan of the Jewish nation. 
virtually every hilltop was inhabited by Jewish villages and farms. There are thousands of ancient burial caves, like this one. We are in a Jewish burial cave of the first century CE, the time of Jesus. The biblical name Shaphan was etched three times above the opening to this tomb. I think it, it marks the owners, the name of the owners of the of this tomb. It's a family tomb. So it it's was not used really by, graffiti, is it? Um, it's a graffiti. It's not. There is nothing formal in this inscription. Yeah, there is nothing nice in this inscription. It's something that somebody scratches with a small um, piece of iron with a small nail. It's a way of um, expressing yourself. So uh, it's a very informal way. And um, in a, a period when internet and blogs didn't exist, and somebody, somebody wants to express himself and to say something, he, he's doing it with a nail on a wall, uh, on the wall of a cave, like today. <laughs> So in some ways, this ancient graffiti is like a postcard from the past. From an ancient burial cave in the Judean foothills, this is Arieh O'Sullivan reporting for the Media Line.